Hey, what's up guys? It's Gage from ARG. We're going to be talking about this brand new Dark Magician support. It's about damn time we actually got more than uh, Ebon Illusion Magician, which was uh, a jump promo forever ago, and it didn't seem like it was really going anywhere from there, but now we finally have shit to back it up. We got a whole bunch of Dark Magician support coming out, and there's a lot to go over, so I'm not going to really spare you guys uh, all the kind of background history on it. We're just going to go through it, and we're going to just kind of talk about it, because it's actually really interesting to talk about. There's a lot that got released in this V-Jump, so uh, there's another archetype that got released in it too. We might go over that at a different date, but let's just focus on the Dark Magician support today. So, we have Ebon Void Magician to start off with, and it's a level 7 Dark Spellcast type effect monster 2300 attack 2800 defense two level seven spell cast type spell caster type monsters is the requirement and its effect reads if this card has xyz material you can activate quick play spell cards or trap cards from your hand during your opponent's turn if you activate a card this way attach one xyz material from this card the second effect is if this card xyz summon card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card effect or destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard special summon one dark spellcaster type monster from your hand or deck then you can destroy one card on the field so the first effect is really what we're going to be basing around this entire archetype around it's activating a quick play spell cards and traps from your hand during your opponent's turn normally you'd have to set them but uh with a card like ebon void magician you can activate them from your hand so that's essentially what the rest of the archetype is going to really focus around as you can see as the trend goes kind of by here now this card here is really interesting i love it i really like um activating things from hand or deck like uh trap church reflesia as you say reflesia but it's reflesia that's probably my favorite card in the entire game. Uh, I actually have my copyright over here somewhere, but it doesn't matter. Favorite card in the game because it allows you to activate a trap from the deck. I just think that's so unique and awesome. So anything that has anything akin to that, activating a trap card from the hand or activating a quick play spell card from the hand on my opponent's turn is really dope and I love it. It gives that uh, the game that extra element of surprise as your opponent really doesn't know what's in your hand and bluffing just becomes that much easier with these types of cards. So I really like that. And then it's second effect being able to float uh, a dark spellcaster type monster from your hand or deck and then destroy a card in the field is pretty dope uh it's not like um that of trapeze magician where you would able be able to float a uh a spellcaster type monster from your deck uh just one of the magicians really uh but then it has that plus on top of that it has the ability to pop a card so it just makes this a bigger threat for your opponent and they have to remove it of course if they want to avoid getting anything destroyed they're going to have to remove it by other means castell or something that doesn't destroy so oh my bad so uh really i do like ebon void magician a lot uh special summoning a dark cast spellcaster type monster from your hand or deck anything under that whole realm it's a little scary uh, i don't think a card with this i don't think a card like dark magician of chaos even with its arena errata i don't know why i said it like that errata will probably ever come off the list and if it does oh boy we're in for a treat but um definitely i really do like this card here and it does seem pretty easy to bring out with all the rest of support so let's get into it so i don't keep you guys uh we have magician of black illusion uh name is really important there because it actually doesn't apply to a lot of the cards we have which is surprising but Magician of Black Illusion, a uh, level 7 dark spellcaster type effect monster, 2100 attack, 2500 defense. Uh, you can only activate the first and third effects of Magician of Black Illusion once per turn. Uh, and then its first effect is if you activate a spell or trap card during your opponent's turn, you can special summon this card from hand. Uh, see Ebon Void Magician. Um, and then second thing is a stipulation where this card is treated as dark magician while it's in the monster zone and then once while this card is faced upon the field if you activate a spell or trap card effect you could target one dark magician in your graveyard special summon that monster all right so this card here uh its name is rather important because it becomes very hard to grab with certain cards like i think there's one card that just focuses specifically on dark magicians uh, i think it's actually the next card we talk about but uh, there's also a card here that just kind of talks about um having dark magician literally anywhere in the card text so i'm glad they actually applied that stipulation even though it did actually show up in the third effect as well so having it kind of in both areas it didn't really matter but having this treated as a dark magician while it's in the monster zone is rather awkward because i'd rather Rather have it treated as a dark magician in deck or something something actually relatively similar to that of maybe a harpy lady card cyber harpy lady uh perchance where it's always treated as a uh, harpy lady so you would be able to bring this off of like dark magic curtain and everything too but um i guess that's not the way it works but uh as far as the card goes for this archetype it does tie in rather well 
uh, for the fact that uh, it special summons itself off of quick play spell cards or anything that's uh, activated from the hand on your opponent's turn. So it gives you the extra seven to work with of, to, of course, go into these fellows here, Ebon Illusion Magician and Ebon Void and Magician. So um, having the, it, pretty much that's what it's for. The seven come out is really important. And there are tons of ways to actually tutor out regular Dark Magician from your deck uh, with the inclusion of all the support too, like dark cards again, like Dark Magic Curtain. And there's an awesome trap card that does it as well. So there's tons of uh, ways to get the level sevens onto the board to actually bring out this guy. Uh, this guy up here, uh, but this is just another of the list of many. So this card here, uh, I think it's okay. I love the artwork of it. It looks dope as hell. Um, but <laughs> but um, this card here is pretty cool too for the fact that it does get a Dark Magician from the graveyard as well. So you can get two sevens. Um, so you can get two sevens rather quickly because if you have uh, this bro on the field from uh, the previous turn or something where you uh, special summoned it off of using a spell or trap on your opponent's turn and then you activate a spell or trap on your turn, literally any spell or trap, you just grab a Dark Magician from the graveyard and then go into the rank 7, bro. So he's re he's really important, uh, even though I would kind of wish, again, that the name would stay as Dark Magician. Uh, I think that would be a lot better, but it is what it is. So let's keep moving on. we got a lot to go through. Uh, we have Magician's Robe is the next one. It's a level 2 Dark Spellcaster type effect monster. 700 attack, 2,000 defense, and you can only use the first and second effects of Magician's Robe once per turn each. First one is during your opponent's turn, you can discard one spell or trap card, special summon one Dark Magician from your deck. And then number two is if you activate a spell or trap card or effect during your opponent's turn while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from graveyard, banish it when it leaves the field. I like this card a lot. I think it has it does a lot for really seemingly how small it is. Uh, the first one during your opponent's turn, discard spell or trap, special summon Dark Magician. Damn, that's hot. Like, again, that kind of goes back up here to Magician of Black Illusion where it doesn't apply to that, which is kind of sucks. But um, as far as it goes, being able to just bring out a Dark Magician from my um, deck on my opponent's turn, yo, that's really hella. And then even if, like, uh, even looking at the second effect, if they get rid of it, I can bring it back if I activate a Spell or Trap on their turn. So if I have Ebon Void Magician out, activate a Spell or Trap, I can bring this thing back from the graveyard, and then I can still um, Special Summon a... Uh, Dark Magician from my deck. So that's super hella like powerful being the fact that this is able to recur itself. So if something does happen, something tragic, I'm just still able to do it. Uh, another thing is uh, this actually dodges Valor because all the effects are actually activated on your opponent's turn. So that's really powerful in itself. Um, I do really like this card a lot. I think uh, definitely the uh, the rod and the robe, the rod's next actually. Uh, there's probably going to be more to add on to it hopefully. But um, these cards are actually just really critical to the uh, complete strategy of the deck here, and I don't think the deck would be anything without them. So this deck is this. I mean, this card is really awesome in itself here. But let's move swiftly on to Rod, which I also think is really powerful. Magician's Rod is a level three dark spellcaster type effect monster, 1600 attack, 100 defense. This is probably a lot better than Robe. Uh, first effect, it well, you can only use the one and two effects once per turn each. But the first effect is if this card is normal summoned, you can add one spell or trap card with Dark Magician in its card text from your deck to your hand. And the second one is if you activate a spell or trap card or a spell or trap effect during your opponent's turn while this card is in your graveyard you contribute one spell caster type monster add this card from your graveyard to your hand essentially a rota for literally any spell in the dark magician kind of uh arsenal you have dark magic curtain you have the next card here too dark magic circle and then you also actually have access to the eye of tamias which is a more unique kind of card i mean it's unique i don't know if you'll actually play it but that is something notable too literally you probably have access to literally any spell or trap in the deck just from Magician's Rod here, and it's a normal summon. That's so dope. And then the fact that uh, the second effect is kind of wishy-washy for me. It seems like a pretty heavy cost, being the fact that uh, you have to activate a spell or trap during your opponent's turn, and then you have to tribute a spellcaster type monster to add this thing back to your hand. Now, granted, its normal summon effect is really powerful, but is it enough to be tributing off my big bros uh, that's not Magician Robe? I don't know. I mean, I, I can see maybe these two calming well together maybe they're supposed to where you bring out magician's robe on your opponent's turn and you bring out and you have magician's rod just uh, laying in your graveyard or something and then uh, if something were to happen on your opponent's turn you sack off the magician's robe it gets banished but then you add this back to hand for essentially free because you got this thing from the graveyard for free i see kind of that as the combo here but literally in any other scenario where magician's robe is not on the field or in the graveyard to be put onto the field, this guy just kind of uh, will chill in your graveyard for a while. But its normal summon effect is enough to be playing this thing at three. It's just so powerful. 
two more card, uh, three more cards to get through. Actually, one of them is not too really too much to talk about. But this is the next one. Dark Magic Circle is a continuous spell card. You can only use the one and two effects of Dark Magic Circle once per turn. First effect is when this card is activated, look at the top three cards of your deck, and if there are uh, either any spell or trap cards that have Dark Magician in its card text or Dark Magician among those cards, you can reveal one of them and add it to your hand. Return the other cards to the top of your deck in any order. And then the second effect is if Dark Magician is normal special summon to your side of field, you can target one card your opponent controls and banish it. Whew, wow, that seems really, really powerful. Uh, the fact that this card, uh, the kind of degrading how it's only when you activate it, kind of like a tanky, if you will, you get to uh, reveal the top three and potentially add one. It's not a guaranteed add, which kind of sucks, but the amount of cards you're playing that will have a Dark Magician in its card text is enough to make this card that you're probably able to get at least one card out of it. Uh, being able to only add one of them kind of sucks too. I kind of wish uh, it would actually be even more broken in the fact that where you, if you revealed three, you get to add all three. That'd be really, really, really powerful, but I just think it would actually make the card over the top. Uh, you can Mystical Space Typhoon this thing since it's a continuous spell card just like that of Tanky, and they won't be able to do that. Well, no, they will because the... No, they won't. I don't know. I think uh, if you mystical space out from this thing, you won't be able to add. Um, but that that just seems that seems correct. I don't know. I don't know. And then uh, second effect is if dark magician is normal summon or special summon, you're gonna be normal summon or special summoning dark magician a lot, whether you like it or not. Like even illusion magician, uh, that's not treated as dark magician. But like the uh, the bro here, magician of black illusion, dark magician, everything that's gonna be hitting the field a rather lot. So. Uh, Pretty much in perspective, if you have this card in the field and you bring out one rank seven, you banish two cards in the process of doing that. So that's immediately actually getting your value back and more. I really like this card a lot. I think it's going to be a lot, like, it's going to be a hard thing to handle. And it's pretty much a three of at staple because it is essentially kind of a tanky, if you will. But it also has something on top of that, which is really powerful. So I really like this card. And just the longer your opponent keeps it on the board, the worse it's going to get for them because you're going to be keeping Brank out those. You're going to keep bringing out those rank 7s, and you're going to be banishing a lot of cards in the process. Banishing it, again, that much better. This card's ridiculous. Uh, the next card's really, it's okay. I mean, uh, it's Illusion Magic, quick play spell card. You can only activate one uh, once per turn. And then you tribute one Dark Spellcaster type monster control, add up to two Dark Magician from your deck or graveyard to your hand. This is the card that kind of plays back into the uh, Black Illusion Magician up here. I think that's what it was. Uh, Magi Magician of Black Illusion, excuse me. Uh, adding from your deck or graveyard to your hand, Magician of Black Illusion doesn't apply to either of those. So literally, the only card you can add is Dark Magician of Chaos if it ever comes off the ban list, regular Dark Magician. Those are the only two targets you're really going to have, and I don't know how much I'm really keen on adding two vanilla cards to my hand. Uh, it just doesn't seem that great to me, and this card, it, as much as I'd like to say it's okay, I mean, you can add it off the Dark Magic Circle with the um, Dark Magician and its card text and everything, but it just seems rather mediocre at best. Uh, you're not you're not even plussing at the point you activate this card or anything, it's just kind of eh. I think if we had more targets that kind of worked with it, it would be a lot better, but uh, Magician of Black Illusion especially, if that worked with it, oh, then I'd be all for for playing this card, but it's just, it seems kind of wishy-washy for me. It doesn't seem that great. Pretty hefty cost to pay for a card that doesn't add too much, uh, but m makes up for it with the next trap card here, and the very last card we're talking to talk about, Magician's Navigate. This card's ridiculous. Uh, it's a normal trap card. Special summon one Dark Magician from your hand, then special summon one level 7 or lower Dark Spellcaster type monster from your deck. If you control Dark Magician, except during the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and then target one face up spell trap card your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of turn. Wow. I mean, I guess this kind of combos with the illusion magic and the fact that this gets your Dark Magician to hand. I just think there's better ways to do it though. But um, being the fact we can special summon a Dark Magician from hand, then a level 7 or lower Dark Spellcaster from the deck, including Magician of Black Illusion that we were up back up there, uh, is so powerful. I mean, having the two on board pretty much for free, and then going into the rank 7, you go plus 1, but then you make your rank 7 right away, so you're going to get even more advantage from there. Just a really, really powerful card. And then the fact that it also has something uh, that it does in the graveyard too, where if the Dark Magician accepted during the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, uh, you could banish it and then target a face-up spell card, negate it. That's really, I, I mean, that's not quite 
it's not really too powerful uh, not like destroying it like galaxy cyclone or something but it's still something really noteworthy that this card does more than just its first effect which is still already ridiculously powerful so overall having this archetype i do like it a lot i do think i'm glad we're finally getting something except you illusion magician now we have Ebon void magician and everything and i really do like how this archetype is shaping up i think it's going to be a lot of fun to play uh, probably going to get it in another structure deck i wouldn't be surprised uh because we have the blue eyes in the structure deck but i uh, everything looks really sweet too like if you looked at the artwork oh it's gorgeous like i'm normally i'm not a big fan of like the dark magician i'm more the blue eyes kind of way but i this this is this is growing on me i like it a lot let me know what you guys think of all the dark magician support do you think it has potential did i miss anything when i'm talking about it uh, is there something i'm not seeing i don't know let me know guys uh but yeah if you guys like the video be sure to like the video thumbs up the video how many especially you enjoyed the video if you guys want to buy or sell product if you want to attend elements and if you want to read articles from the top top players all three out games which place to go check out be sure to like our facebook fan page and subscribe to our twitch stream if you haven't already but as always i thank you guys for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe i'll catch you guys next time Gate Energy, signing out.